So this is, this is just a, the map of the world, and there it shows the estimated prostate cancer incidence. The darker is uh, uh, represents where more, more prostate cancer is diagnosed. However, as you can see, and, and you might remember, so that's not the same. So it's getting, the dark area is just getting better, and the lighter area is just getting worse. What does it show us? So probably it uh, reflects the importance of the screening. Just single. So this is, a, uh, this is American data which shows that an estimated new cases uh, regarding the prostate cancer, this is on the second on the list, and an estimated dense uh, death, it's on the fifth. So this is really a disease which we have to talk about and which is very important to screen and very important to find as early as it is possible because it is treatable. Unfortunately, prostate cancer, or not unfortunately, but at the beginning there is absolutely no symptom, therefore it's very important to find it as early as possible. If there is a prostate cancer, there is an additional and also as important question uh, to be uh, declared whether is it serious or not. Of course, as you might be all aware, the gleason, it rep represents the uh, disease and as it, the number is getting higher, the disease is just getting more serious. What is, what is the difficulties we are dealing with? So that there is a problem, then the PSA, which we have been using for the screening, is expressed at similar levels both in B9 and also in cancerous cells, unfortunately. There would be a wish that a biomarker which would be overexpressed in the prostate cancer, that could be called not a prostate specific, rather a prostate cancer specific antigen. Ideally that would be which is reproducible, cost effective, and there is a correlation to the disease outcome. This is very recent data from yesterday and on PubMed research. Uh, there were uh, 32,024 papers found uh, regarding the prostate cancer and biomarkers uh, together. And this is a slide from, from Sharok, I remember. This is, and also, uh, only number of biomarkers which is regulated by urologists. There is one, this is the PSA, which we all, uh, already uh, decided is not an ideal one. Why have not prognostic biomarkers lived up to their promise? Unfortunately, not as easy as someone would think. So let's go on the PCA screening. We have some data, uh, as it was already uh, 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 told that there is a uh, Tirol study which worked very well in a relatively small region and this is we are very proud about because this is uh, from our region from Central Europe and especially from Austria. This is data which there, there was there is a, a PCA screening from Scandinavia which uh, shows the importance of the screening. I wouldn't like to talk so deeply, but this is, and as, as you can see, this is absolutely not a recent data, but the reason why I brought the 2009, because that was the first time when it was proved that the screening has a great, great promise for our patients, because as the graph shows, the screening group and uh, regarding the cumulative hazard, uh, then uh, regarding the death, it's much better if it is comp uh, compared to the control group what does it mean? Whenever the prostate cancer is early detected, we can save lives. So it showed that there is a 20, approximately 20% less mortality with the screening, but unfortunately, uh, more than 1,400 uh, patients has to be screened uh, to find one uh, prostate cancer, and 48 uh, prostate cancer has to be treated to save one life. So there is a, a difference which was seen uh, seven years after the beginning. So that's why the, uh, the data is coming from 2009. And if we compare to the breast cancer, unfortunately, uh, the prostate is not doing as good as the breast cancer. So this is just a graph which shows, unfortunately, there are the, uh, these uh, cases, uh, five from uh, 100, there is a, uh, when the PSA suggests cancer, where there is not a cancer was found. And unfortunately, also the PSA, is, as, as we uh, uh, talked about that this is not as good and two cases from the one is misses and, and then uh, three of the 100 uh, can be found 
uh, as a really prostate cancer patient. Family history and also the race plays an important role, but I think in this region is, it is not as important uh, regarding the race, but the family history, of course, it gives just an additional uh, uh, importance of the screening and then it is very important to be aware about. So what does the guideline of the prostate cancer says in, in the EAU? that prostate cancer is usually suspected on the basis of digital rectal examination and the prostate specific uh, antigen. It has to be uh, done together and there is definitive diagnosis depends on the histopathological verification of adenocarcinoma in prostate biopsy course or in operative specimens. This is again relatively recent data from the European Urology uh, which shows that the early detection significantly reduces the prostate cancer death. And then I just let me go to the uh, United States. Unfortunately, we have been dealing with uh, difficulties in Hungary because then uh, I think that uh, some of you might be aware about the PLCO study, which didn't show any difference between the intensive and the other, the less intensive screening. And that's the reason. And, and it shows they didn't find almost any difference uh, among, among men uh, during 13 years of follow-up, intensive between intensive and less intensive uh, 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 PSA screening. But what is the reason of it? Unfortunately, it was for, there was absolutely no difference found, but in the previous year, in, and it was also published and, and also presented in the AUA meeting, Unfortunately, a so-called less intensive screened people had more PSA testing than the other group. So this is not questionable that they were not able to show any difference. And just coming back to Hungary, unfortunately this is the study and the AUA guideline why the Hungarian National Insurance stopped the reimbursement of PSA for the GPs in Hungary. So it's really very sad although having the uh, good uh, European study, this rubbish, I should say, American one, which was not perfectly performed, uh, stopped us uh, to detect. So that's the reason why we recently started to do a Hungarian population-based study together with another university and together with the National Health Service. And uh, we were looking on the prostate cancer patient. Fortunately, we have only one uh, national health insurance which covers almost 10 million uh, people. So it looks, it's something very uh, easy to be done, but it's not as easy as, as the first side. So we were looking on the incidence, these are the Hungarian data, so the incidence in two, uh, between 2002 and 2005, uh, we are proud about because in, uh, even in uh, the presentations for medical students, we are talking about the American and less likely the European data, but we have the Hungarian data. So this is, it, it shows that between 4,200 and 4,700 uh, newly uh, diagnosed prostate cancer, what we have, and we were looking about the survival and the cost regarding the patients who underwent radical prostatectomy. And it was a corporation with a different, oh, I'm sorry. So this is how the selection, I'm sorry, this is how the selection was managed. So we were, ident we were able to identify more than 160,000 <coughs> men. And then we just came across Cross include uh, and we included uh, 17,642 uh, 17, uh, uh, patients who were diagnosed before 2002, so that we had a chance to uh, follow them up for minimum 10 years, who uh, were uh, given hormone therapy, underwent radical prostatectomy, or underwent radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, just. So this is the result. What does it show us uh, regarding the survival year? So if you compare the patients having radical prostatectomy, it was significantly higher if we compare to those who did not. So uh, of course, we are not absolutely aware what happened with the others. We know the patients and we can select if someone underwent radical prostatectomy and in the other, whether uh, that definitely he did not have any surgery. So, and if you have, uh, if you look at in these numbers, the number of patients with survival time, 
you can see so the patients having radical prostatectomy, uh, the more uh, than five years survival is more than 84 percent and if you compare the 47 percent so it's a big big difference so this is the this graph shows the age of the diagnosis of course this is most commonly seen in the around the age of 70 or or uh, mid 70s and this is the efficacy of comparison under the age of 70 there is survival with radical prostomy was found 11.3 years and survival with medication it was 8.3 and it was very very significant data and it's very very promising this graph shows the overall survivor. It was, of course, as it was already shown, much, much better in radical prostatectomy group compared to both total sample or matched control uh, patients. And the differ difference between survival curve was absolutely uh, significant. This is the age and metastasis matched uh, sample with no radical prostatectomy. So as you can see, not only patients lived longer, but the patient rather lived without metastasis and it is very very important having less pain and having much much better quality of life and this is also regarding the uh, the, the graph is also shows in favor of a radical prostatectomy regarding the bone metastasis it, the data is also significant we did a subgroup analysis just looking at the patients uh, over the age of 70 as you can see this number is quite low so in that time because it was not uh, recommended, very few patients uh, underwent radical prostatectomy over the age of 70, but still we had 83. And even in this group, so the oldest group, I would say, is not, not oldest men, but oldest group who underwent radical prostatectomy, the result was very, very significant in favor of, in favor of uh, radical prostatectomy. So this is this is the data. It shows the uh, uni and multivariate survival uh, analysis and a radical prostatectomy is in favor in a, uh, in favor of a pa favor for patients under radical prostatectomy it's a very very uh, uh, significant data also that is the same uh, having bone metastasis and uh, the lifetime cost and this is it for us and also for our patients it's absolutely not as important but the national health insurance it shows although these pe uh, people live longer although this group have more people more men but the cost is significantly less if you compare those ones who did not get the chance to undergo radical prostatectomy so just summarize so radical prostatectomy and this highlights the importance of the screening and early detection is a life expectancy significantly longer each of the patients is, of course, a, a lawyer, but the life expectancy and the stage of disease is much, much more favorable. This applies to men of uh, similar age, plus 2.5 years uh, survivor benefit. The cost of the sur surgery, especially in Hungary, is much, much cheaper during the whole treatment of period, in spite of the uh, fact that patients followed radical prostatectomy live longer. The cumulative costs are still lower in comparison to the medication. So there is a significance of early diagnosis, prostate cancer awareness, and screening. Thank you very much for your attention.